Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create Easter eggs. Plain and simple, I will be working with clipping masks and in version 2 with the warp group. Let's get started with a simple Easter egg. I'm starting with a circle, turning the circle into curves and modifying the shape by pulling up the top node to make it an egg shape. I create duplicates to have a side by side to show the progress we're making. I add a radial gradient to add some volume. I did a video prior on playing with spheres, a mini video. If you haven't tried out radial gradients and creating dabs through those. You might want to watch that one. Using the pen tool, I add some straight lines, give them a stroke color and a slightly wider width. I duplicate the lines using the power duplicate and then take them and move them inside the egg as a clipping mask. Alternatively, you can cut them and use the paste inside. Selecting the egg, I paste inside with Ctrl Alt V and the lines will appear inside the clipping mask. Clipping masks are a great tool to hide content that would overlap while keeping it fully editable rather than going via Boolean intersections because they create exact cut shapes and are limited to shapes. While here I can work with lines, groups, I can throw pretty much anything inside a clipping mask. Next up I change the colors of my lines, give them the colors of the rainbow and then increase the width of my stroke because I'm not quite happy with the gaps. A wider stroke will fill that gap. We have a plain colored egg. To define the shape and the material, I add a highlight at the top. A simple circle with a Gaussian blur and a reduced opacity. I duplicate the circle, enlarge it and add a transparent gradient from the top down. I add another duplicate of it, squash it. This would be a reflection of the surface underneath the egg. That is the first design done. I could have used the same effect, the clipping mask, with circles instead of lines and it would have turned into a polka dotted pattern. The one thing that is more visible with the dots now is that they don't follow the shape of the eggs. They are not deformed towards the edge of the egg. This is something we can easily create in version 2 with the warp group, but version 1 does not have that ability. One way around it is by creating designs that are either so complex you don't see the lacking curvature or by using curves and enhancing that look in your design. That's what I'm trying to do with this design using curved lines and dots. And here we have one of my constant struggles, the fill versus the stroke color. Which part is active and quite often I assign the color to the wrong one. One of the great advantages of working with the clipping mask is once I am in the clipping mask, I can add new elements right in there. I don't have to create them outside and then move them in. To enhance the 3D feel of this design, I duplicate the egg itself inside the clipping mask, set the gradient from white to black and the blend mode to multiply. That way it shades everything inside the clipping mask, including the highlights. So I move it below my three highlight shapes. The big advantage of working in vectors is the ease in which you can create variations. I took the egg on the left, changed the gradient in the egg itself altered the width of the lines, altered the colors of the strokes and rearranged the dots. Without much effort and in very little time I have a new design.
Let me do another one, a variation of the stripes I did earlier. This time I'm working with a blue egg and I want to have white and yellow stripes on top. I alter the color of the gradient, change the stroke color to white and I shorten the curve. That way the notes are closer to the edge of the clipping mask and it makes it easier to adjust the curves and the handles, especially when I'm trying to create an even curve. I adjust the thickness of the stroke. Variation makes the design more interesting. I use a duplicate of the yellow line and adjust the width to make it a little bit thinner and use it as a dashed line. And instead of having dashes I want to make circles so I put the first value to very low and the second one is adjusted to be higher and that way I create a dotted line rather than a dashed line which I can then duplicate recolor and if I scale it down by reducing the width of the stroke it remains a dotted line it just has more dots along its length. As you can see, the clipping mask makes it really easy to play with the design inside the egg shape. For the next design, I switched from Affinity Designer version 1 to Affinity Designer version 2. I'm creating a symbol of a little flower based on a deformed circle. I create the pattern that would cover the egg and group that and place it inside the clipping mask. As you can see, it's not bending to the shape of the egg, which we can do in version two by assigning a warp group. I assign a warp group and set it to fish eye. The fish eye brings in the center, enlarges it and makes the outsides a little smaller. Now I can edit this grid by using the node tool and bring the sides in even more. I do the same thing with the bottom and as you can see, the flowers on the side and the bottom deform thanks to the warp group. I used a symbol for the flower to make it easier to edit. Not only can I change the color or the position or the rotation, but I can also replace the symbol entirely. I take all the petals, group them and hide this group so the flower is no longer visible. And I copy in a new shape, in this case a little bunny, place it and position it to match the size and the location of the original symbol we have a bunny instead of the flower. As soon as I turn the bunny off and turn the flower back on, we have the flower pattern back on the egg. I can reuse the warp group and place another vector design inside. I can import a mandala pattern I created earlier, recolor the egg to a red and put in that design. As soon as I put it into the warp group, it will deform The warp group doesn't just work on one object inside it, it works like a group. I can put multiple objects inside, like this pattern. I take four copies, place them inside and they will be warped accordingly. Let's play with that effect a little bit more. This green egg will get a design I did earlier, which is a funny face. I just place it inside the warp group and it deforms. The same with the fish, once I place it inside, it deforms. In this case, I did not take the scaling of the strokes into account and strokes inside clipping masks don't scale even if you select the whole object and turn the scaling on. You have to do it for all the elements inside a clipping mask. I create a few bubbles on top turn them into a compound, set the opacity and have my blue egg with goldfish. The one thing that does not work with the warp group is importing bitmaps. So if I take the warp group 
and put a bitmap image in you can see in the layer panel that it is an image it does not deform the warp group doesn't work I need to put in a vector design if I take the source for the image a group of vector shapes it will deform and work within the warp group so far I've used the gradient on the egg just for shading of course you can go multicolor shade the egg from one color to another you can add patterns in this case it's a simple circular pattern with the blend mode set difference the Celtic pattern from an earlier tutorial put inside the warp group or a seamless pattern works inside the warp group as long as it is a vector shape. This concludes the digital painting of Easter eggs. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon and let me know what you want to see on this channel and I will see you again soon.